All right. See if we can get this up here. <clears throat> Hopefully that the wind doesn't blow it over. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, citizens of Utah, I'm going to go ahead and answer this question because um, worldwide, worldwide, there are a lot of people that are tuning in to the straightway truth. Um, I'm hoping that you enjoy the videos uh, that we've posted from Tabernacles and how wonderful a time uh, that we had in the Most High Yah. Today, this particular video is on the subject of divorce. Divorce. Now, I'm going to come from a secular point of view as well as a biblical point of view. I'm going to give you a lot of education here uh, that you may not be familiar with. All right. Worldwide, men are opting out of marriage. When I say they're opting out of marriage, I'm talking about marriage from a secular perspective and point of view where the government has influence over your union. Most people are just saying, well, you know what? This is just simply, especially men, they're saying this is just simply not in my best interest because when I go into the court system, I am the one that feels like that I'm being raped because, I mean, after all, if my wife decides to go out and commit adultery on me or she decides to leave me, no matter what, the system always sides with her. And so men today are opting out of marriage for those reasons and those reasons alone. And of course, biblically, you do not need a marriage license. I notice and I realize that in this country, most of you really truly don't care about the truth of anything historical. Uh, you don't care about the truth uh, of what it means and how it impacts you. You don't even care about society. Your mindset is as long as I can just go through life doing what I want to do, who cares what everybody else is doing as long as they leave me alone. But anytime laws are being passed, you're not being left alone, contrary to popular opinion. The way that marriage license started in the United States of America, because George Washington, uh, Thomas Jefferson, all these other people did not have marriage license. But the way marriage license started was because of quote unquote miscegenation. And that means any time that blacks and whites intermingled or white and blacks intermingled and stuff, they had to go and get approval for marriage. Now the government here in the United States of America saw how profitable of a business that marriage was. And so they decided to make everybody get marriage license. And of course the church, the Christian church, <clears throat> of course they agreed with the government. And now you have the government and the church in bed together to bind a union together, which if you will listen to me very closely, you hear what I say. Most people in this world are concerned about polygamy, but they're not concerned about the spiritual polygamy that takes place when you allow the government in your home. Because when you go and seek a marriage license, according to the state right here, you enter into a third party contractual polygamous relationship. How do I know that? Because neither you or your wife, meaning man or wife, have the authority to be able to dissolve that union if you're going to give them a biblical writ or divorce. Now, there are many different religious perspectives concerning divorce and remarriage or divorce in general here in the society. Uh, the church speaks and its church says that you cannot get a divorce under any circumstances. And if you do get a divorce, uh, you have to remain unmarried. Now, that is theologically flawed. That is a false doctrine that has been perpetuated because of a few New Testament scriptures that is taken out of context. But I assure you um, that, that, that that has no leg to stand on, especially when you come from the instructions, which is the law. The whole Bible has a basis of what law is. Now, in other words, the prophets, the gospels, as well as the renewed covenant, it all has to comply with what the Torah or the first five books says. That includes Bereshit, Shemot, um, Ra'ikla, Bar-Mikbar, and Dabarim. Exodus, uh, I mean, Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy, okay? Everything has to comply with that. Not only this, look this up, write this down, write this down. According to public law, 1982-1983, public law 97-280, write that down, and then go look it up on the internet, 97-280. This country, the United States of America, declared the Bible as the word of God. In other words, it became law. Now, since all that has taken place, guess what? Um, we've seen that we have some Supreme Court so-called justices suited and booted 
that has actually defied that law when they open up the door to homosexual marriage because the, the Torah or the instructions is very clear. So what's happening today? Well, people are redefining what the Bible has to say because according to Jeremiah 8.8, 8, the pen of the scribes are in vain. You need to go check these things out and check behind me. But keeping with the subject of divorce, men are opting out of it because it's just not in their best interest and it's not to their benefit. And I suggest to you, and I'm only going to make a suggestion because that's all I can do. You do not need a marriage license in order to be married. Now, if you choose to get a secular marriage license, meaning from the state, you're the ones going to have to determine if it's a benefit for you because there are certain perks that come with it. Most of it has to do with if your spouse dies, Social Security could probably be given to you or you could declare them on taxes if you're a W-2 or second class wage earner. Uh, there are many perks as far as that goes and they will comply and they would give you perks for it. But you have to ask yourself, is it really truly in your advantage? Now, my, what I would suggest is if, if you would just change your mind and learn how to rethink and retrain yourself rather than what the, the school system, the public food system, as well as this society has taught you how to think, then you could probably independently function outside of the scope of what they have told you and do it in peace and happiness. And not only that, but still even have an inheritance left up and laid up for your family, even if you die prematurely. But divorce does not benefit men whatsoever at all in this society because the United States of America is a matriarchal society. It's not a patriarchal society. This is a society where women rule, period, and the laws are enforcing it. And men, those who are men and have to stick in a fortitude and a stomach to realize what they are and who they are, uh, will not allow, not only the system, but will not allow any woman to run over them. Now, we see that here in America, that there you stand a 72% chance of being divorced if you get married, according to uh, the state out there. 72% of all people, be they Christian, pagan, uh, monotheistic, uh, mixed with polytheistic, um, Satanists, or whoever it is, you stand a 72% chance of getting divorced. That's from the church, people who say they believe in Jesus Christ, all the way across the board. And you have to ask yourself the question, do you want to participate in that? Now, if you would just be a man and woman of your word and you write your own contract and you say your own vows towards each other, uh, and then, of course, marriage is sealed by consummation. If you go do that and you live out your days in peace and be a man of your word, be impeccable, and be a woman of your word, be impeccable. And mind you, you're talking to a man right here or you're listening to a man right here who has been married to my first wife for over 33 years. All right, and I put it like that because of the translation in 1 Timothy, as well as over in Titus, which definitely needs to be looked behind in order to get clarity and comprehension and understanding because many of you out there are on your second wife or third wife or fourth wife, and many of you women on your second husband or third husband or fourth husband while they're yet still alive if you follow the Christian doctrine. But um, if you want peace, contentment, and happiness, if you want to be able, especially as a man, to be able to patriarch in your family and to have the rule over your family, and you want to be able to govern your family as you see fit and see will, and, and as you see fit and as you will, excuse me, uh, you want to do everything you can to keep the government out of your house and the government out of your bedroom and exercise all of your rights, your inalienable rights, rights your unleanable rights that is granted to you by the creator universe simply for the mere fact that you breathe, that you live and you breathe. Um, now, I, I, I hate to say this. I don't mean to hurt Christians out there, um, but God does not hate divorce. Why would he hate divorce when God, the creator of the universe, almighty Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yahweh, as some people like to say, or Yahuwah, like some people like to say, why would he hate divorce when he himself is a divorcee? Because God has two wives, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Go read your Bible. Not what these secular people say out here according to the Christian perspective and point of view. But he has two. When, what God does hate is the putting away. And he hates men dealing treacherously with the wife of their youth. 
That is what he hates. He does not hate divorce because he clearly defined over in Dabarim, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 4, that is Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, verses 1 through 4, there is a law that is already in place that has been entrenched in Hebrew, Hebraic culture for thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. There's a divorce provision, and it teaches you what to do and how to do it and how to go about it. What uh, Yah was doing more than anything was protecting the women from a stigma being up on them. You see, in the day, women didn't have the option to go out and to have the state on their side and take a man for over half of what he has. Or they didn't have the option to go to Walmart or go to Kroger's or Myers or, or Lowe's or Home Depot to go to work. Back in the day, there's no such thing as employment like that. You either indentured yourself because, in, as a servant because of debt or, or you either sold yourself into prostitution in order to make a living. That's what literally happened, especially if you did not have, according to the Leverite law, if you did not have a kinsman that would redeem you. Now, I realize that I'm saying a lot right now that flies all in the, in the face of traditional Christianity and traditional formats and the way things, at least the people where they think it ought to be. That's because people are more interested in philosophies. They're more interested in traditions than they are the truth of Yah's word and what his word has to say. But I hope that you're hearing me in this day and hour. If you would like to know more, all you have to do is go to my website, www.straightwaytruth.com or straightway.com. And straightway is spelled S-T-R-A-I-T-W-A-Y. Or you go to online-church.org every Tuesday at 7 p.m., or every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, you can hear a lot of these truths. Um, I'll include a lot of information down below if you'd like to know more, but I assure you, the way this society has presented things to us is a fabricated pseudo lie. Also, the way that the church has presented things to us is a fabricated pseudo lie. They bank on you in living in ignorance, and they bank on you not reading and studying and becoming a student of that word or a disciple. They want you to continue to be operating after the paradigm of this country and this world so they can keep their finger and their influence on the back of you and keep you in slavery. Now, most of us, we may not be what you call having chains on us physically right now to where you can see, but 99% of Americans have chains on their minds and they refuse to exercise self-autonomy. They refuse to exercise independent thinking. And I am sure that this bizarre behavior is deeply and collectively embedded in the subconscious mind of man. That I am sure of. And I am under no illusion whatsoever at all that anything that I've said in this video will motivate, nor will I think or do I ever believe it would deter anybody from the course that they're presently on unless you have the Holy Spirit and the power of y'all working in your life that will consciously wake you up out of sleep, consider things that what, I, that what I've just said, and hopefully the Most High y'all will give you understanding. But if you are divorced, the truth is you can be remarried contrary to religion if you are divorced all right or divorce eat and stuff all right follow me there are certain rights and granted and privileges that are granted to you according to the torah but you have to live in a tribal an ecclesiastical tribal environment not a secular environment now remember you cannot serve two masters to whomsoever you yield your member servants to obey that two servants you are so again the church has been in bed with the government and the government is in bed at the church and they have contracted you and they have used contracts and they have used these, these deceiving contracts to bind you to it and to take you away from the creator universe from your liberties. The right to life, liberty, and property, which they redefine as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life, liberty, and property. Now, I've said a lot. I hope that I brought clarity to you. I'm sure that many of you are going to leave even the more so in a confused state. Um, but however, if there's someone out there that would love to disagree, you're a theological professor or you are a pastor of a, a pretty large organization where people actually, you have influence and the, you have the people as proof of the seal of your apostleship or your pastorship, I'll be more than happy to have an open discussion and an open recorded debate worldwide as long as the whole world can see it. At, at your place of choosing. And that's the truth. And that is the truth straight away. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful day. I am going to get back out here to the country life because those wild turkeys over there, which you see me kept looking over there through the video, is it's got my attention.
Sure, it's nice and peaceful out in the country. I just love it. Y'all have a wonderful day. Shalom. Guess what? The king is coming.